One of my subscribers recently asked, what kind of considerations are there for when you go running and it's slippery out, there's snow, there's ice, and it's freezing outside? How should we change our training or our approach to a workout on that kind of a given day? Well, let's go outside and take a look. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm grateful to be here. I'm having a good time. Oh, you've caught me talking to myself. Lying to myself. <laughs> Wow, it is a beautiful winter wonderland out here in Denver today. And I wanna help a subscriber who recently asked me, what should I do when it's really cold out or if it's really slippery out? And obviously today there's snow on the ground and under some places, there's some places where there's ice under the snow. So I'm running on some of the, the most treacherous terrain you maybe could run on right now. A little bit of snow with a little bit of ice. And it's true, you can't do normal training in these conditions. So I think the number one consideration if you're thinking about getting out in these winter conditions to do a workout or a long run is the fact that you're gonna have to likely change your plan for the day. So number one, it's really hard to run fast when the footing underneath you is not quite stable. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of slipping, sliding, the faster you run, the more dangerous it gets. I like to really keep things kind of slow on these days. So if I do have a workout, probably gonna do that on the treadmill. If I do have a workout, I might do that in an area where I know it's very well plowed. So for example, I used to live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right near MIT. And MIT was really good about plowing this one and a half mile loop around some of their buildings and athletic center. And I was able to do a lot of runs just on that one and a half mile loop. Now, is it boring? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's basically the outdoor version of a treadmill where you're just running loop after loop after loop. And when I was running 80 miles a week, that was a lot of loops, <laughs> but it gave me a clear place to run. So. If we're thinking about how to change our training, if we're out in conditions like this, number one, let's adjust our expectations. Number two, if we can, find an area that is very well plowed. Usually universities, colleges, schools, uh, very busy economic centers might not be a great place to run, but you can look for areas that are really good about clearing off the roads and sidewalks. And of course, option number three is to simply get inside and do it on a treadmill. If you have to do a workout, if you have to run fast on a day like this, you probably can't do it unless you're on stable footing or on a treadmill. You know, I'm not that big into supplements, but I do love AG1 by Athletic Greens. I consider it my nutrition insurance, helping me cover all my bases, so I know I'm not missing out on anything my body needs, especially when I'm training really hard. I try to eat really well, but of course, AG1 is that extra security that gives me peace of mind over my diet. One scoop per day, and I'm getting 75 vitamins and minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants, and adaptogens. You can try it out too at athleticgreens.com slash Jason, and they're going to throw in a free year's worth supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. Check it out at athleticgreens.com slash Jason. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that because the footing is kind of slick, you're probably not going to be able to run as fast. So it's a good idea just to run more by effort. If you're doing an easy run, it should feel like an easy run. Whether your pace is the same or not is probably up to the footing. And if it's slower, that's okay. Let's not risk falling. Let's not risk a, a turned ankle or straining your groin because you were slipping around a lot. Instead, let's just run by effort and have it feel like the run that you had planned, even if the pace is a little bit different. Now there is another option for being able to get outside and go running when it's very slippery. And that's wearing some sort of 
mechanical device on your shoes so that you have more grip. Something like Yak Tracks or similar, where you're basically putting spikes on the bottom of your shoes with a little fun thing that wraps around your, your running shoe. And I think that's really great, but the big consideration for something like that is the fact that you really can't do fast workouts when you're wearing Yak Tracks or something similar. So if you are gonna go out wearing some sort of spike on the bottom of your shoe, it does kind of mess up your stride a little bit. So especially if you're new to something like that, my recommendation would be just go short and easy with those at first and then see what you're comfortable with. Because for a lot of runners, it kind of throws off their stride a bit. And the last thing you want to do is to put yourself in a position where you're running fast, you're running hard, and your form is not good. Because that's where injuries are made. Now, one thing we have to discuss is temperature because if you're running when it's really, really cold out, you do have to take some extra precautions. Now, I grew up running in Massachusetts and Connecticut, so I know some harsh winters, and that's really where I ran the most amount of weekly mileage that I ever did. So I know it can be done. And in fact, I have coached runners in Alaska and Sweden who go running when it's negative 30 degrees the runner I coached in Alaska used to run on a frozen river in crampons and, and running snowshoes. So it certainly can be done. However, if it's much lower than about 10 degrees or zero degrees Fahrenheit, you really wanna make sure that you're covering as much skin as possible. So right now I'm out here, it's only about 30 degrees. So it's just under freezing. There's a little bit of snow coming down. It's not super cold out. But if you are running when it's 10 degrees, five degrees, zero degrees, you're gonna wanna start really covering more of your face and neck. You're gonna wanna start doubling up with tights and pants on your lower half and really making sure that if it's windy, you're wearing appropriate wind resistant clothing so that the wind chill doesn't really cut into you and really make it too cold to even go running. Now, I should say too that this is where a dynamic warm up can be super helpful. You do a dynamic warm up in all your, your running gear and all your layers right before you leave your house to go running and you're pre warmed up. I mean, it's literally a warm up routine. It's gonna warm your body up, increase your heart rate, your respiration, so that when you do go running, you're just not quite as cold. And it really makes that first one or two kilometers go by a lot easier. So if you're someone who's trying to train in these winter conditions, know that it can be done. Just know that you have to adjust your expectations a little bit, run more by perceived effort rather than pace. Use some additional tools like a treadmill or something like yak tracks where you can get some extra traction or just avoid this kind of weather altogether. And it's gonna be really helpful as you continue your training this winter. Just remember to stay safe. And remember, this is kind of fun out here. So enjoy it. <laughs>